Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run through the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days. This week is starting off pretty sunny and pretty warm in most areas but as we head through the rest of the week it will get progressively cooler if not a little bit colder in some places later in the week and there will be some unsettled weather as well. We do see a bit of an upper trough and a cold pool move in from the east on this east easterly wind around Wednesday, Thursday time. As we head into the weekend as well, as we'll see on the GFS, GM, ESMWF and the ensembles, it's looking likely the high pressure will retrogress up towards Greenland and it will open the door to north to northeasterly winds of low pressure sat by, looking like quite a cold, potentially very cold for the time of year and unsettled conditions prevailing. Couldn't even rule out some wintry showers, some frosts, and so generally some really quite horrible conditions compared to what we'd hope to see as we head through the end of April. Now, that's a complete contrast to what we thought about a week ago or a few days ago even. We did think high pressure would be giving us some warmer and drier weather. The only difference is that positioning of the higher pressure has moved further northwards and westwards. Then it's allowed northerly or northeasterly winds to move in and kept any of that warmer air down towards southern France, down towards uh, Spain as well. So only, you know, 500 miles away in some cases, but... Still a big enough difference uh, to be bringing much, much cooler and probably quite a bit more unsettled weather as well through the weekend and into next week. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link is in the description. So do start on the live radar, you can see it is pretty bone dry at the moment. There was a bit of rain in the east earlier this morning, but near enough bone dry now. And it's going to be quite sunny and pretty warm today. So not too much going on on the live radar at the moment, but as I said, around Wednesday, Thursday time, things could pep up from the east as we see a bit of a cold pool coming out of eastern Europe heading our way. Now, if you put on these temperatures uh, just before midday, you can see widespread yellows appearing. So relatively decent, nothing too special today, maybe highs of 17 or 18 degrees in a few spots. And of course, along the east coast, always going to be slightly cooler with that easterly flow. Now, you can look out to our far east. It doesn't look all too cold out there, but cold pools will be forming and they will be heading our way as the air does get dragged out of Eastern Europe into Russia, where there is some cold air still remaining as it heads our way. Uh, yeah, could be giving some pretty chilly conditions as we head into the weekend um, with, with that high pressure moving up towards Greenland. So you can see at the moment, not too bad, not looking like anything colder is coming our way, but this is just the next couple of days. It's going to be generally quite warm and fairly pleasant. So we do now have a look at the UKV, see what the precipitation temperature is doing over the next five days. Now you can see that rain early this morning spreading through and giving a generally quite dry and sunny picture in most places through this afternoon. There will still be cloud in places, um, so it won't be all sunshine everywhere, but in most areas we'll see a bit of brightness and sunnier weather, especially in the east as some drier air does move in. A few showers through central England, but again, nothing too major. Overnight tonight, clear skies for most, uh, perhaps a bit of thicker fog and cloud moving in off the east, getting dragged in off the North Sea, but it should sort of dissipate into the afternoon, and tomorrow should be a really quite nice sunny day once again. The far southeast could see a few showers and a few areas of thicker cloud, but generally still pretty much crystal clear blue skies for most areas, and really quite pleasant. It's however through Wednesday into Thursday that we start to see that change. A few showers in the south through early hours of Wednesday through Wednesday afternoon still looks really quite stunning. Not, like there's, not looking like there's going to be a change at all. The head through Wednesday into Thursday, you start to see the cloud pop in from the east and rain appearing through Thursday afternoon with that upper trough and cold pool spreading in. It's quite widespread, heavy showers moving in again. This will change. Uh, definitely will change. It's a very small feature, so very small differences can change the intensities and positions of this rain. So we won't take this too literally yet. It's still sort of three, four days away, so we'll have to keep an eye on exactly what happens. But looking likely, an upper trough moves in, much colder air embedded within it, and some showers associated with it as well. That will eventually start to clear further westwards, but what happens is where this upper trough sits, it actually starts to develop an area of lower pressure, and that eventually opens the door to those north to northeasterly winds. And you can see that if we put on the mean sea level pressure, starting to develop a, a low pressure system towards the southeast across parts of 
France, which will eventually sit in the North Sea, and they'll start to pull in the wind from a northeasterly direction. Because you can see easterly winds, and when it's that low, that upper trough moves in and starts to develop a low pressure system in the southeast. So we've got to keep our eyes on this. How it does develop will change the intensities of any precipitation we see and how much cold air we drag in. But the latest runs are producing this low pressure through the end of this week and really developing it through the weekend before we open the flood doors or floodgates for northerly flow. If you do look at the upper air temperatures, you can see it through early part of this week, it's pretty mild, a few good few degrees above average in most places, and that will continue through Monday into Tuesday. Could see some briefly colder air move into the far southeast, and that's why we see a bit more trapped cloud perhaps, and a bit of rain in the far southeast, another tiny little cold pool appearing, and perhaps a little upper trough associated with that, but nothing compared to what we see through Wednesday and Thursday. As we head beyond that, into later in the week, you see the proper cold pool starting to arrive through the early hours of Thursday. Really quite cold air for the time of year, minus 5, minus 6 degrees at 850 HPA moves in and gives much colder conditions and eventually clears through and just sits developing that lower pressure system. Now to put on the max temperatures, they won't always reflect the upper air temperatures because it does always depend on sunshine and a little tiny aspects like that which can change it but it will generally be turning cooler as we head through the latter part of the week you can see today widely mid-teens 14 to 16 degrees maybe peaking 17 18 or 19 in a few spots again the most the warmest conditions this week most likely will be in scotland and parts of republic of ireland and northern ireland furthest away from those easterly winds as we head beyond that monday night uh chilly in a few pot spots three to five degrees but nothing too cold and into Tuesday afternoon, once again mid-teens, 14 to 15 degrees widely, perhaps peaking 17 or 18 in the far north and west. And then as we head into Wednesday, once again overnight temperatures down towards the mid to low single digits. And then into Wednesday afternoon, starting to cool down. No more of those 16, 17 degrees, more likely 14 or 15 degrees peaking at that. And then 11 on the east coast. And you can see overnight to Thursday, much cooler. And by Thursday afternoon, you can see that cold pool moving in 7 or 8 degrees through East Anglia. And that's uh, milder further westwards, uh, but much cooler than what it had been earlier in the week. And you can see for the rest of the evening, really quite chilly overnight. Temperature dropping down to the mid to low single digits. And by Friday afternoon, look at that. Many areas not getting into the double digits. 7 or 8 degrees. And again, isolated 10 or 11s where we see a bit of sunshine. So much, much cooler towards the end of the week. And you can see into early hours of Saturday with those cold upper air temperatures, you can see a frost developing in in southern England, even as far as the south coast. Really, really late frosts. And if we do see a widespread frost appearing, which is viable, not guaranteed, but is viable, later this week into the weekend, it could be quite damaging coming towards the end of April. So we will have to see exactly what happens but uh, definitely signs of things turning much much cooler later this week now we can see this well reflected on the gfs midnight run now the six o'clock run is running however it's not fully uh, updated yet and we haven't got the ensembles for it so i just thought we might as well just look at the midnight run we've got all the data available now you can see the high pressure building in at the moment easterly flow pushing in you can see that cold pool appearing towards eastern europe moves in and as it sits over the top of us it starts to develop that low pressure system it does get a bit of help from a low pressure system with the atlantic a bit of energy there but it moves out into the north sea by sunday and that's where it opens the floodgates to northerly winds you can see the only difference from having a warmer dry pattern is this high pressure further northwards and westwards and not sat where the low pressure is if it was sat there we'd be drawing up southerly winds spanish air and it would be very warm. Instead, we're pulling in Arctic air, and it's very cold by early next week. Beyond that, we remain in that cold air, and eventually low pressure could bump into that and give some very cold, unsettled conditions into the longer term, before eventually it all breaks down and we go into more of a westerly flow. Again, anything beyond day 10 here, when that starts to evolve, is very uncertain, so we'll take that, with, uh, we'll take that too seriously. If we do progress backwards, have a look at the raw upper air temperatures, you can see it is chilly through this week. That cold pool does get down to minus 5 at 850 HPA, but nothing too much colder through the weekend. But eventually, we open the floodgates to the Arctic air. Minus 5 isotherm comes in, so high chance of widespread frosts and even some snowfall, especially over higher routes, but even to low-lying areas overnight with this sort of air mass. The minus 10 ice foam could even come in for Scotland, incredibly cold. But eventually it does degrade away and we start to pull in more of a westerly flow. So milder air returns, but it does stay fairly 
unsettled. Again, run this back, have a look at the temperature deviation. You can see it is a good 6 to 8 degrees below average, even peaking perhaps as low as 10 degrees below average at times. And you can see even better on the potential equivalent temperature. Look at that. We're the coldest area on our latitude by quite a long way in terms of the uh, feel like uh, upper air temperatures. Uh, very, very cold uh, there with very, uh, well, with proper Arctic air moving in. This sort of air mass, as I said, in January, February time would be giving widespread cold conditions, cold enough for snow anywhere, um, probably ice days as well with this sort of pattern um, through actual winter months. Again, coming towards the second half of spring now. End of April is getting into the second half of spring. It's not going to be anywhere near as cold, but wouldn't be surprised to see mid single digits in some places. Again, if we do put on two meter temperatures, widespread overnight temperatures around the freezing point, and in the day, look at that six to eight degrees. Really chilly conditions, temperatures you'd expect in February time or even early March. So, very, very interesting seeing this again. Not guaranteed, things can change, but looking pretty cold from the latest updates as we head into next week. If you do look at the GM, see how that does compare. Again, easterly winds moving in over the coming days, the cold pool moving in with the upper trough, and then develops into that low, and we see a northerly flow. So very similar from the GM, increasing our confidence in that, and all the way to day 10, we stay in that very cold, unsettled pattern. And you can see the high pressure does move further towards Canada, even further into a west-based negative NAO. And what that will mean is low pressure could come in off the Atlantic, which will keep it unsettled, but perhaps will cut off that northerly flow to so turn it slightly milder that's the only sort of saving grace we can see there if you look at the upper air temperatures you can see once again very cold widespread minus five ice foam moving in and once again right at day 10 you can see it's starting to get cut off a bit but still in that cold air for a good four or five days here coming in as early as sunday and lasting all the way to thursday in many points really quite chilly and i wouldn't be surprised if ground conditions were getting quite cold at this point look at that overnight temperatures widely towards freezing midday temperatures struggling around that six to nine degree point once again very very chilly if you do look at the ecmwf see how that does compare again easterly flow coming in pretty chilly conditions eventually that northeasterly comes in not quite as succinct as the other runs were going for. It does get cut off a little bit earlier because the high pressure system splits with some of it going towards Canada and others dropping, other part of it dropping over the UK for keeping us unsettled and bringing back a westerly flow. It's a very similar pattern, but slight change in that high pressure system means not quite as um, direct northerly and it does cut it off sooner. Now we can see this northerly flow coming in, quite chilly uh, upper temperatures, minus five isotherm, coming in and eventually gets cut off by the Atlantic flow. So much milder air coming in, but still reasonably unsettled. Again, run it back and have a look at the temperature deviation, widely down to the minus 10, oh sorry, 10 degrees below average. So really, really quite cold for the time of year. Now, if you finish by looking at the ensembles, these are the latest GFS uh, midnight run. Again, the six o'clock run will be coming out soon, but midnight run is fully out, so we can have a look at this, and you can see generally average to below average over the next 10 days or so. There is a lot of scatter, some are going well above average, and this is just because there is still uncertainty in the position of the high, but we are definitely seeing more and more runs every single um, we, every every single update trending toward that colder region so i do think it will be cold it will be below average most of the operational runs now are colder than average um and a lot of the ensemble members are so it's looking cold and unsettled towards the end of this week and to start next week um and even pretty cold as soon as sort of wednesday thursday time so chilly uh really quite cold uh, and could be some snow in places as well over higher routes in the north equally though there are milder ensemble members so things can change very quickly could go from cold to mild in the space of 12 hours or so so we'll have to really keep a close eye on it still a lot of scatter around so no guarantees but that's the most likely scenario at this stage again if we put on the dew points for the midnight run again pretty cold dew points a lot of on some members getting towards that freezing point so again frost and potentially some wintry precipitation is likely at times um, and this is london remember so even colder further northwards and again if we put on those two meters temperatures you'll be able to see from quite a few ensemble members really struggling around the mid to high single digits. Uh, and again, this is London, areas uh, more rural and further northwards with some elevation will be a few degrees colder than this. So some areas maybe not much higher than five, six, seven degrees and towards freezing overnight. Proper February, March sort of conditions. 
but coming towards the end of April. Really, really cold conditions coming up. Now, if you have a look at the ECMWF, see if we see more consistency there. Yeah, the ECMWF definitely a bit more consistent. Less scatter, still some scatter, but less scatter uh, up until around the 26th, 27th of April. So the next sort of eight to ten days, most ensemble members are average to below average, and quite a few are considerably below average at that period of perhaps in a week's time, around early next week. Again, still are some uncertainty whether we do open those floodgates, but quite a few ensemble members do have that minus five ice firm coming in for all areas. That would be really chilly and would be really unsettled. That one, That's the one thing that has really picked up. It is turning cold. Um, that was always on the cards potentially with high pressure building in but the one thing that we weren't expecting even as soon as a few days ago is this unsettled weather appearing low, that low pressure system that sits in the North Sea has come out of nowhere really in the last sort of two or three days and it does mean instead of being generally drier and hopefully warmer but we still have that caveat that it could turn cooler because of the easterly flow it has now turned colder uh, and very very unsettled so not good not not the sort of model correction you want to see this time of year um, i know uh, i said this uh, i think yesterday or the day before that whenever we're in winter we always see the models always trending milder but whenever uh, we want the models to trend milder in sort of the springtime or even autumn or summer it trends colder typically and you know, when we're in the winter you know some people want a bit of snow want it to turn a bit colder it always turns milder uh, just does the opposite to what uh, a lot of people do want uh, these times of years so unfortunately not looking great for the rest of april again things can change but the latest trends are for it to turn quite a bit more unsettled and a lot colder as well good five plus degrees uh, widely colder than average for the time of year and it will feel chilly out there so you may even need your gloves and hats out if you're out early in the morning really or not too good so hopefully things will change over the coming days hopefully we see a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel as we head into may but at the moment the models are just keeping us um, in this cold drab conditions and uh, yeah not too much uh, great not, not really anything too good coming up uh, apart from perhaps the next sort of 48 hours where things are sunny and warm in many areas so make sure you do go out and enjoy that and we'll just have to see what the rest of april has in store as we do head into may as well hopefully as i said something a lot nicer a lot drier a lot warmer really has been unfortunate and a bit of a failed model runs recently where they were showing a lot of um, warm dry conditions not seeing that now unfortunately but as i said we'll have to see what happens over the next couple of weeks so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon